Hi guys, today we're going to do something really special and do some transparent watercolour florals. The funny thing about recording the video is that you get to see the end result at the beginning of the video, but when we sat down to do this I didn't really know what I was going to do. I had two points of inspiration. One was this flower we created the other week when I did the uh, plate of pastels video so I swatched the pastels and then did this little rose and so I'm really drawn to these colors at the minute uh, but then I was also thinking of this uh, lilac pansy which I thought that we were actually gonna do and then we switched and ended up back at these colors so um, you'll kind of see all that happen so I begin with the Skoda Reserva number no. 6, that's the brush that I like using the most uh, for just regular watercolour, like it, um, it's my workhorse brush and I'm just showing you here, someone always asks about the thick book at the side that's just waiting down the camera, so um, yeah, but uh, let's see. Um, I, we are doing it in a Cornelison and Sons um, so you can see there that the, they're the swatches from the video with the with the rose but uh, we're doing it in the Cornelison and Sons sketchbook so I believe it's Fabriano paper it is not uh, advertised as watercolor paper it's more of a sketchbook but it's quite thick and I really enjoy it so we're also going to use the uh, Twisby Eco the rose gold one and I do have a video for that on my other channel. So I'm just walking you through what I've kind of done in the sketchbook so you can get an idea of what um, what I'm using it for. I think it can handle more than this but I'm just kind of using it for light washes of things at the minute. And sometimes I do go onto the back side of the page and sometimes I don't but it, it buckles a little bit but it's not too bad. So today we are going to use the back side of that paper, that page, and uh, we're just going to get into it. So I'm just going to voice over parts that I think I might have to explain. So here are a couple of pansies, and this is what I thought we were kind of going to be doing. The one on the right I did first and I was trying to get the colouring on the one on the left but I couldn't do that for about a year so I just wanted to show you kind of how I do that and then I'm also still thinking about these watercolours and should I do these colours so uh, at the end I put the book down and we're settling on the lilac and then things change. So we're using this palette, I swatched this out a few weeks ago and I will link to it uh, in the top right corner. We're also using this palette and I will try and upload the swatches of this today as well. So I really enjoy both palettes, one is like my mainstay of the colours I use all the time and one is like for my shimmer colours. Okay, it takes me a minute to get everything organised, it's quite a considerable effort to kind of set the screen up and make sure that the video is nice but I'm really glad um, I've had you know really lovely and positive feedbacks about the you know video so I really appreciate that so we are using the um, let's see Faber Castell uh, it's just a lead pencil it's a watercolor lead pencil the aquarelle um, graphite aquarelle and I just like using this to put a um, heading down. I always like to 
start my sketchbook pages with a heading. That way I there's kind of um, a record of what I'm doing and also the date because often if I don't put the date on at the beginning I will forget to date the painting. So I've just decided we're going to use the uh, Twisby to go over the lettering because I, I just looked through the camera and it looks a bit pale as well so I'm going to go through the over the lettering. Uh, this is something I like to do as well to practice lettering. It's going to take this out but I, I guess you know I don't know let me know if it's something you like to see or not. So because I was kind of torn between like the full process or just you know get on with the painting so I'm totally happy just to jump in with the painting. Okay, so I didn't realize I was a bit off screen there, but I'm mixing up Rhodonite and Sedona, and then I'm also adding a little bit of uh, perylene, what am I talking about, porphyry violet ochre. So the first thing we're going to create is a transparent flower, your basic five petal flower. So anyone can paint one of these. One of the ways that you can make this look a bit more sophisticated is just by the colors that you use. So you can see I'm taking my time here. I am mixing up the Rhodonite and Sedona and then I'm adding in a little bit of that uh, Porphyry Violet Ochre to deepen the colour and to make it a little bit stronger towards the bottom of the petal, like where there might be a bit of shadow. What I mean is by the, uh, sorry, the bottom of the flower. So I'm leaving the top ones a little bit more softer and then deepening the bottom petals a little bit. We're going to create a few more of these this week as well so I'll just do quicker videos and maybe just one flower and um, but we'll, we'll practice a few of these so um, I'll, I'll zoom in and kind of show you in a little bit more detail. Okay I think next I add in a little bit of uh, this is a schmincke color it's champagne gold but I believe if you mix their gold and their silver you'll get a similar color to this I really love their uh, silver and I really love this color and you can see I'm applying it in like a crescent shape and I'm just kind of dotting it on and letting it bleed a little bit into the still damp petals they're not totally wet so I don't want it soaking right onto the petal and then here you can see I am adding a little bit into the petal so what I do next is I dry off my brush and I and then I just wipe over that to kind of soften it into the flower a little bit more. It's got like a piece of paper towel there. I'll show you it a little bit later on because it's not really something I usually show in my videos, but I'm trying to show you a bit more of the process. So I've just gone in and got some perylene violet and I am deepening sort of well deepening I'm creating shadows with that on the left hand side So all this is happening while the paper is still pretty wet. So I I like to I like this paper because it dries pretty quick as well. So I don't have to wait for ages. I don't like using a heat gun because I often use non-light fast colors. So I feel like that will make them fade quicker. Okay, so I skipped a whole bit of footage because I I forgot to press play. Sorry. So I created a whole nulla flower and we're going to just go over how you layer these second lot of petals. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm sorry you're gonna have to bear with me, but um, it's been a long week, but I wanted you to see how um, So once the flower is dry the five petal flower You've added a few extra colors then you go back in and you do the same thing five more petals and you rotate them so that they're in the you know empty spaces in between the other petals the key here is the first layer has to be dry so you can't uh you know it won't work if the first layer is not dry You can see there even at the end I pulled a little bit of the water out of the petal but you can make the colour a bit stronger or you can make it a little bit paler. Okay, so let's get back to the first flower. Once the second layer of petals is on there and I'm waiting for it to dry, I want to create uh, some petals to show you what we're going to do for the next layer, you know, the large flower that we're creating. So I'm just uh, getting some shell pink and I am just sort of wiping that, you know, making it a, a large wash on the paper, nothing, I, I'm not trying to be careful or anything, I'm just getting it on the paper and then I am uh, cutting out a few sized petals to kind of show you something. So we're going to kind of shape them while they're still a little bit wet and then I want you to be able to see the shape that we're going to create in the next flower and I, I, I have another video of transparent flowers on my other channel. I'll link it here and I will probably link it at the end of the video. Um, and someone asked me, can I just explain a bit more in depth how to do the, the um, a part of that? And so that's what we're going to look at today. So you can see I created them roughly the regular shape of just a round sort of teardrop shaped petal. And you know that's what we've been doing just layering those on top of each other to create a transparent flower uh, but what we're going to do after this is we're going to pretend that the petals are curving so this is a bit more advanced but you can see I'm trying to explain this you know so you'll be able to do this and really enjoy it and make something beautiful so just before we start the next flower I'll draw that out for you so you can see what I'm talking about but I'm just showing you here the shape and how we, we are going to create that with watercolor in actually a pretty simple way so and this is actually such a good idea as well if you don't have a real life flower to work from create a model you know just out of paper and some watercolor it's easier to work the petals when the um, 
paper's wet so that's why I put some colour on there as well. And then you also get to see your flower with colour on it and how those shadows might fall as well. Okay, so we're going to put the final layer on the flower and do some a third layer in just some small petals and I pulled out my Artist Loft ones just to show you that you can use any uh, shimmer colours. It actually got a bit tricky, I had palettes going everywhere, but uh, I'm still using the Violet uh, Porphyry and I am still using the Rodenite and then I just add some of the Artist Loft shimmers in there. And so we're doing exactly the same thing in a smaller version to complete the sort of um, petals. Really you don't need to do this step, this is just an extra step, I'm just showing that you, you can continue and do this and make the flower fuller or you can, you know, make it just, there's, there's so many different ways you can do it. And so the reason why I'm being really careful in all these close-ups is because I'm holding the camera by hand and I'm painting through the camera so I'm not looking at the actual page. Okay, so I'm quickly creating a little petal, uh, a little leaf with Van Dyke Brown and then I am, I put a little bit of the Phantom Fire in it as well. You can see there as well, I, I do the shape and then I go back in and I just put a little bit of, I just deepen it up right at the, um, you know, where the leaf would join the flower. Sorry guys, I'm having a really hard time finding words tonight. So, um, okay, we're going to start the next flower, which I am super excited about. So it took me a minute to figure this out the simplest way possible, but basically we're starting with the petal shape, the shape we all know, the shape we've been working on. And now what we're going to do is start there and create some uh, straight edges, sort of. So essentially we've created some angles where the petal would fall over and then we create a little curve or a little hill that sort of goes inside uh, into the middle of the petal. So we don't need to worry about the hill part first, we just need to worry about flattening some of the edges of this round petal 
that will be our first pass and then we will glaze over the top of that the little hill and that will look like the petal is curving into itself okay so I have my sort of reference petal here and then I'm sort of looking on the page where I want to place the first petal and you can see I'm also looking at where I want to flatten the edges of this petal so I don't necessarily go um, exactly with it for one thing it's hard for me to see and for two um, I'm just kind of making it up as we go so you can see I always kind of draw the outline of the petal first and as long as your brush is wet enough you can do that and then you want to quickly fill it in so that there doesn't you know it doesn't become a line around the petal the whole time I keep moving my reference petals and I also keep mixing up different shades of Sedona, Rhodonite and French Ochre and I just keep mixing a slightly different shade of that. You can see this one had more French Ochre so it goes more peach. Honestly, I'd actually love to make artworks like this where they're part watercolour and part um, 3D, like something comes out of the painting. The other thing you can see is I am not the petals are not overlapping these are all separate on the page they're not touching each other they're I'm just letting um, we'll do the overlapping petals next so these ones are just all next to each other See what I mean here? I put the French ochre in and that petal was just a bit too uh, wet so it started to bleed too much. So I can just get my brush, I lift that out and then I just dry it on the paper towel. So you can see there as well, I just get a little bit of water. I sort of dry it off a little bit at the side of the cup and then I can use the brush to kind of smooth that back out. So while I'm waiting for the petals to dry again I go back to the leaf and finish off the leaf and I am always you know doing that when one thing's drying you kind of go and work on a different part. So here I kind of want to get the paper towel and the cup in view so you can kind of see what I'm doing there uh, because it is a, an important part of kind of this next part. You know, just it's something that I'm always doing and I never really show on camera. So here I actually decide to change brushes because the point on this isn't pointy enough and I, I just feel like I'm not going to get the right... Um, you know it's not going to be thin enough when I'm kind of blending it back into the leaf so I've got the Da Vinci Petit Crisp board 2-0 so it's, it's it's a mop brush it's not my I, I actually love the brush but the handle feels very lightweight I do have a couple of other brushes that I'm looking at but I will share those with you if I can you know organize that but 
Um, here you can see, so I start with the outer part of the petal and then I draw the little curve, the little sort of upside down hill. And so it's not 100% accurate. Um, it's just me sort of going around where there's a flatter part of the petal. I'll do either a larger or a smaller a hill depending on what I think you know would go best there and that's just sort of um, practice or you can go back to your reference petals as well and be sort of more specific on where everything is and you know judge it from that You can also see I'm trying to mix up colours that will match back with the petal. Okay, so here I am going to work on the leaf for that flower and I've got Van Dyke Brown. I put a bit of hematite in it. You can see, I'm not sure if you can see, um, but the hematite separates really beautifully and so you get this really soft, uh, different effect. So, and I think I also put some Phantom Fire into that as well. You'll see here that I have already done the second lot of petals. I didn't do that on camera because this whole thing was taking, it took nearly three or four hours by the time you do everything, let it dry, um, you know, mix all the colors up and everything. But it's the same process as the first flower. You just go back over it. You can overlap them once it's dry and then you do the whole thing again. So the funny thing that happened with this is I wasn't happy with the shape of the flower yet and I was thinking that I might you know uh, paint in a few more petals so I left myself a bit of room there with the leaf and you can see there the paper the watercolor is having a hard time on the paper I'm not really sure sometimes it just happens in spots in not in sketchbooks but here I am using my um, 
mechanical pencil I really like this one and I just start sketching in these sort of tips of the uh, petals the sort of under petals and I've never done anything like this before I've really always kind of wanted to but it just turned out so nice so I'm really happy with this I, I don't really do you know shading with pencil I've always admired artists who can and who do um, yeah I, I really like it it turns out to be a bit of an artistic conundrum because you can see the transparent petals but then you can't see the uh, you know from these pencils that there is petals under it and you can't see them so I really like it Okay, so ta-da, we are finished and now you have, I think, a few ideas of how you can create uh, different transparent florals. And so now I'm just going, I, I just still feel like, you know, doing something. So I am mixing up some more colour and I'm going to put some buds and some leaves on and just kind of fill up the page.
Okay, so I thought we were done here, but turns out uh, I just, I guess it's kind of like a um, workout. You've got, you, you know, your warm up, your exercise, and then your cool down. And so I just had a little bit of creative energy left and I thought let's just try something quick and um, loose floral uh, and it ends up kind of being a patchwork peony. These are the kind of things I really enjoy just to do really quick loose uh, color studies and just sort of get some of that creativity out onto the page, slap something down, try something. And so I'm using this little Stabilo uh, sort of watercolor pencil sort of crayon that I got from Jet Pens, and I end up only sketching half of it. I've been really enjoying just doing that lately, just doing sort of three quarters of the flower with one medium and then trying something else. So I get my art graph out. It's in this little pencil pouch that I use just to house bits and pieces on my desk that I don't want kind of floating around and I, I can never find them. And so it is a Harris Tweed pouch. I got it off Etsy and I think it's for makeup but I just really like having it for bits and pieces. So I'm not really still sure what I'm doing here. I just go with the flow and I use the art graph to sort of put in some shadow petals and then I grab some, some of my favorite colors. And so like I said, it's a cool down exercise. I I just, you know, your, your sort of brain has been working to try and figure out these, uh, you know, pieces of art. And then you just wanna have a play with color and form. And so that's what this is. Okay guys, so we have reached the end. If you're still with me, thank you for hanging in there. Um, I, I hope everyone's having a good week. I know the year's still trundling along, dishing out a lot of 
things to everyone. Um, I think I'm going to try and change a little bit of how I am putting out videos because these ones, these are the ones I love doing, they take so long. You're looking at by the time I video it and edit it and voiceover or whatever, it's three to four days and I'm just, um, it's hard. So I think I'm going to do one of these once a week and then I'm going to do like three smaller um, videos during the week so it should be good because uh, I'll be able to do just some simple small exercises and things that we can all try and do and um, you can see here I'm just showing you a few uh, different things in the similar sort of uh, color palette uh, so yeah I am excited for that um, one will be sort of a mini color study or just um, color variations a botanical and something else from the studio. Anyway, I hope this finds you well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.